All right, the problem that we're looking at right now is the homework problem that we had last, one of the homework problems that we had last night. This on page 326, number 31. This problem takes you from everywhere to everywhere. And let me explain. Let's go back to, or go down to, where have I got? Uh, right back here somewhere. There it is. Okay, this little summary. Have you all looked at this? You've all printed it. Have you looked at it? Yeah. <laughs> I know about printing and, and looking. You know, two different things. All right. This dude summarizes everything that we're going to do. We are starting in this problem where? Where are we starting? What are we given? Hmm? Is it right here? No. Where is it? Here. Where's the problem, darn it? Yeah. There we go. Okay, yes, we're given grams of uh, silver chromate is the way you say this. Now, let's go back here. Where are we going to go after we start at grams? Where's the only place we can go? Moles. Okay, now, when we're starting with grams and we're trying to find moles, we have to use the periodic chart, which gives you the molar mass, which is the mass of one formula unit in this case, or one particle is even the better way to say it, okay? So the, the weight of one particle is what we're going to find here. If the particle is an atom, then that's easy. Pull it off the chart, you're done deal, okay? If it is a molecule like the silver chromate, you got to add them all up. Are we all good on this? Okay. Now I have moles, and the moles in this particular case have to be changed to moles of something else, and that's where you're going to go down here. Now, Justin, when we did this before school, I did this on the back end. I, I should have done it here at mole, okay? It was the silver, uh, the silver chromate to silver. Okay. Once we have the moles here, then we continue and we do atoms. And atoms always happens with AVO. Okay. You might want to write above this. Do you have your charts out? I hope. Okay. Get your charts out. Write that. Write that word AVO up here. That will help you remember that. Something simple. Something easy. Something familiar. Um, Raise your, hand. Raise your hand if you are not Armenian. Oh, my gosh. Woo. Oh, that's, that's very unusual. <laughs> anyway, for the majority of my students at this school, uh, Avo is a good, familiar name. So, Avogadro is the guy with the 6.02 tenths ten to 23rd. Now, these equalities are what I'm going to have to get you to get used to using and the units of measure. So, watch as we go through this, and let's get our units of measure and our, our, um, come on, where is it? Uh, forward. Uh, where did I put this thing? There we go. Okay. And just a second. So, here's how we get started. How do we get started? All calculations start with given over one. Okay, so it's 25.8 grams of the silver chromate. I'm not recording here? Mm -hmm. I am too. Okay, here's how you tell little numbers going down here. Okay, and that's over one. Now, folks, please, please, please start doing it. Circle the unit of measure, and what the substance is. And duplicate that in your next fraction. Because this has to cancel, this thing right here must cancel. We're going to write it again right down here. Silver, or I'm sorry, grams of silver chromate, CRO4. All right, and we're going to circle this guy again. Now we know 
what we have to cancel. We're on our way to atoms of silver. So, how do we get grams? We, we look back at this nice little chart that we came up with here. Okay, this guy. We're at, gram, at grams. We know we have to go to moles. So, once we figure out the molar mass, and will someone give me the molar mass? 331. 331. 331. Okay, and we'll call this 332. Thank you. Mm -hmm. 332. I'm just going to use three sig figs in, in these problems. We've got enough issues. I'm not trying to make it too many numbers yet. Can't we get the molar mass by like doing the each element? Yeah, that's two silvers, one chromium, and four oxygen. And that's when we will like Y'all know how to do that. That's when we go like two moles. Oh. Yeah. No, 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 not two moles. Two. two silver atoms times the mass of silver, which is 107. Over. Uh, no, plus one chromium. Plus, not over, plus. I know, so you like over one mole. No, no. We're doing this. Silver plus is equal to 214. We're doing the molar mass. And we're doing it for a big molecule. We have one chromium. Molar mass is per chromium? 52 what? 52.0. So we just use 52. And 64 is the number for four oxygens, correct? And then we add that up, and we get 332. Yeah? Are we good here? Yeah. Okay. We just take take it as it comes here. Right. So let's get rid of this for right now. Understand how to do that. Now, what is that equal to? One mole. So the one mole goes on top. And what's the mole of? What's the substance? Silver chromate, ZRO4. All right. Now, next thing off. Look where we are in our little little ditty thing here. Okay. We are not moles, right? Can we go directly to atoms of silver from here? No, because we have moles of something else, don't we? Okay. When we have moles of something else, that's when you might have to come down here. Molecule ratios on this guy. Molecule ratios. And I'll show you what that means in just a moment. And so once we do that, then we can take this guy and go back up here. Okay? And we do that with all of them. Actually, this more properly drawn would be like this, using a rope. Okay, this is kind of the basic layout to get us there. All right, let's go back and see how we do that. And let's look at, in order to make this work, let's look at silver chromate. What is the ratio of silver to chromate? Two to one. So we would have two silvers is equal to one chromate. And this would be moles. Two moles of silver is one mole of chromate. Because that's the units we like to use in chemistry. So here's our fraction. And here's where we're starting. We got one mole of this guy here. So what we do is we simply take this fraction over here and we take silver chromate. And there's two silvers here. Okay. So that's one of those. Oh, not uh, 
For each mole of this guy, I should have written it this way. AG2. For every two of these, we have one of these. One of these has two of this in it. Okay, I'm, I'm working down here. So we've got our mole of uh, one mole of silver chromate is equal to two moles of silver. Now I got moles of silver. Aha! I got moles now. Now I can go ovo or Looking at it as what we just did down at the bottom here with this stuff, okay, and coming back up here, it's like going from this spot to this spot. Are we good? All right, let's take it from there now. Go back. And now we've got moles of silver. How do we get atoms of silver? Now it's AVO. Yes, now it's AVO. I'm going to get rid of this stuff down here. And that gives us some ability to write some more stuff down here. The next fraction. Do you see what I'm doing? See? Okay, this whole circle canceled. This whole circle canceled. Now this whole circle canceled. And this whole circle canceled. This is how you keep your head on straight. If you don't do this, you're going to get lost. You can't just put numbers over numbers. It's like calling up a taxi cab, calling up to get a taxi cab, and saying, I need a taxi to go to the airport. Yes, what is your address, sir? I don't know. And if you don't have that, you don't know. And when the taxi cab comes to your house, I don't know how you'd ever get there, but if the taxi cab comes to your house and he says, Okay, where would you like to go, sir? I want to go to the airport. He says, what airport? I don't know. Uh, sir, I can't take you there. And what, what's happening is you're getting a demand for the, the unit of measure and the substance. You've got to have them both, especially in the stuff we're going to be doing next. Okay? It won't work without it. So, we're sitting right here now, and we have one more fraction, and the only reason this is on a second line is because I ran out of room. Okay. What goes on the bottom of this fraction? Yes, the moles of silver. All right. Now, we're using AVO. AVO is one mole. He doesn't care who it is, what it is, but one mole of it is going to be equal to 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. And in this case, our stuff is silver. So, what goes with moles of silver? 1 or 6.02? 1. That's how you get your fractions right. Now, what's the other number? 6.02, that guy goes on top. 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd, and that is silver. Okay, now we are done. We got our given, and one, two, three fractions, and we're able to solve the problem. Okay, so this becomes nine. Boy, you're persistent. Oh, I don't know why. There we go. Now you're going to do it. 9.36 times what? 10 to the 22nd. 10 to the 22nd. How did you get there? Let's, let's, uh, let's do this. Um, this. This will be 10 to the 22nd. And what's the stuff? Um, silver. Silver atoms. Sure. And that's our final answer. Now, all right, now let's run the numbers. Would you all get out your calculators and run these along with me? 
We're going to start with what? Oh, that's true. Is that a little hard to see? Okay. Okay, I'm going to, you'll have to look at whatever you have on your own papers. And let's see if I can get a little more light here. And while we're doing all this. Now that we can see it okay, let's go ahead and run the numbers. I'm putting in 25.8, which is the grams of silver chromate in the first fraction. Now, in my second fraction, I have a number on the bottom. This is the way you do fractions one after another. You hit the divide sign, which tells the computer, or the calculator, which is just a little computer, it tells the calculator the next number I'm putting in is on the bottom of the fraction. So that's my 332. Okay? Now, where's the next number? Yeah, the 2 is on the top, so this is going to be a times. Compu uh, calculator, the next number is on the top of a fraction. So here we go, 2. Now, where's my next number? It's also on top, so I've got to tell, tell the calculator, calculator, next number's on top, 6.02, and I am done. And you say, hey, what about the power of 10? We'll deal with that. I'm just wondering, I'm just trying to get my calculator stuff, the stuff that I can't do in my head. Now, when that happens, guess what? I'm going to take this number now, and let's go back to the smart board. I hope. Here we go. We go back to the smart board, and this is the number that we started out with. 0 0.936. And... The power of 10 that goes along with it before we get to this box is 10 to the 23rd. That's how you deal with your powers of 10, folks. Now, once I have this number, I've got to convert it to scientific notation to make it look like this, yeah? Yes. So I'm going to move this number to the right by 1, and that gives me 9.5. But now I can't have the same power of 10 because I changed this guy. When I move this to the right, it's going the same direction as my power of 10. In this case, my power of 10 is a positive number. So if I'm going the same direction as the power of 10 is wanting to take it, I can't take it 23 from here. I can only take 22 from here. Does that make sense? Because if I go 23, I'm going to make a bigger number out of this. And it, you can't make it a bigger number. But I can only go 22. And so that's why we get the stuff in the box.